This is one I call opening the black box. The Dharma is, is in the process of coming to the West and has been for well, quite a while, decades and decades. But there are some special considerations that we should keep in mind if you don't mind. Now, in America and in the Western Hemisphere in general, we know all about uh, using the mind how to use the mind. In fact, we're, we are taught to use the mind as perhaps life's greatest tool, you know, to praise and to get things done in the world. And the, the list of what we can do with the mind is as endless as the mind itself. So when it comes to taking advantage of the mind, you know, some, you know, using it as our Swiss army knife, so to speak, we are totally up to speed here in the United States. However, where we fall short is in knowing what the mind itself is, uh, which of course has to be part and parcel of knowing the mind itself. We should also know what it is uh, and to know it thoroughly. So the mind for most Americans is like a black box, something that we use all day as a means, but never as an end in itself. We have never inquired as to what makes the mind tick, much less opened that mysterious black box and looked inside or, heaven forbid, that we should go in there. So that's, and yeah, and there's another point. I don't know how we actually got where we are, but somewhere along the line, we here in the West collectively assumed that the mind, just as it comes out of the box, is good to go, in fact, perfect or flawless. Perhaps it's, it's because babies are so perfect and new that we assume that the mind of each child, each one of us, is pristine. This is a colossal mistake. While it is true that a child is a clean slate as far as forming a personality or self, yet the karma and the and what are called the instinct traces of each one of us have been a long time coming and are hardly anything new. And you might you might think we would have figured this out by now just because even identical twins can be so different, etc. We each have a different pool of desire from which we draw. So we have a mind that we don't know other than how to use it in the external world, just like a tool. And we somehow assume that each mind is a clean slate at birth, even though we have IQ tests and all of that other stuff to show we have innate differences between babies, children, ourselves. So therefore, we are in kind of a double bind. Like all human beings, we need to know our own mind. And second, as a culture, we don't know that we don't know. We assume we already know our mind. After all, you know, it's our mind. So it's no wonder that Tibetans see the West as such a rich field of opportunity. As the 16th Karmapa, uh, Rangjung Rukpe Dorje, once said when he was asked why the Tibetan lamas, the great lamas, are coming to America, his response was, if there was a lake, the swans would go there. So they see the U.S. as a fertile ground for the Dharma to, to thrive and expand in, and, and so it is. The bottom line is, uh, how do we take this black box of a mind that we have and turn it inward on itself and take a look? Like a spelunker, how do we go in there, torch in hand, and look around? It's, uh, it's like the paradox of an open mind. How open are we? And if not, how do we open the mind? If there are 
doors to the mind. Just where are they? And lastly, where's the torch? So there are doors to the mind, but up to now we apparently, you know, prefer to keep them closed because somehow we imagine the mind as the basement that we hate to go down into. That, you know, there might be boogeymen there. So how do we go into the mind? Of course, that is exactly what I blog about here. How to realize the mind, how to realize it. And as the New Testament says, straight is the gate and narrow is the way. And it fits here too. As the Dharma teachings endlessly point out, the sun of the mind, the mind itself is always shining. But the clouds of our own obscurations, impurities, obscure it. So all preliminary Dharma practices are about removing the clouds our, the cloud our mind so that we can see the sun. It's like wearing dirty glasses and, and we never even know, we never knew they were dirty because it's all we have ever known. So it's that simple. The doors of the mind are blocked by our own existing obscurations, you know, mistakes. Uh, and these have to be removed before we can know much less realize the mind itself. That's why the great majority of preliminary Dharma practice, beginning practices, are methods to purify and to thin out our obscurations, uh, to make them more transparent so that we can see through them and eventually see beyond them.